Windows 11 22H2 is finally here and it has brought with it several fairly large changes, some nice new features. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over, not all of them because there are quite a few, but at least cover some of my favorite new features in Windows 11 22H2. If you wanna know how to get this update right now on your Windows PC, well, that is simple enough. Click on your handy dandy start menu, go to settings, and click on Windows Update right there. Check for updates and you should be able to download and install this now. So one of the first things you're going to be seeing is a new way to interact with the snapping menu. So before, if you hovered over that button there, you got your different layouts. Well, now you may notice that if you're dragging a window around and you bring it above sort of the halfway point of your screen, you get this thing that pops up and you can just basically drag an application into one of these spots. And then of course, it will give you the suggestions about what else to put there. I feel like that is a pretty handy new feature to have. You may notice that I have tabs on my file explorer. That is not coming to the stable channel for a little while longer, so ignore that, although it is absolutely fantastic and I would uh, no longer like to live my life without it, but again, that will be coming in a later update. Some other things that are here now are some new touchscreen gestures. Now, I'm not filming this on a touchscreen, so I can't really demonstrate this, but Swiping up from the bottom is going to give you your start menu. Swiping in from the side will give you the notification center, which I can show you what that looks like, at least if I do that. That's your notification center. So swipe in from the side and it will actually follow your finger. Now it's not a set animation. It actually moves with you. That is quite cool. If you swipe up from uh, right next to that where some of your taskbar icons are, you'll get your quick settings. So just a lot of new swiping gestures that are really nice to see and they all feel really nice and fluid there's sort of inertia involved really good stuff in the realm of personalization if you go to background you can now actually change things to windows spotlight and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a new wallpaper every day you actually will get a little icon up here that will allow you to say you like the wallpaper you dislike the wallpaper or to skip to a different one, I have a dual monitor set up and it doesn't really, I don't think it's gonna work that well. Let's, I guess we could find out. Let's go to Windows Spotlight and see what happens. Well, it has moved us to the default uh, Windows uh, wallpaper. Now, I think I have my icons turned off. So let's see if I turn them back on. Do I get, here we go. There's that icon there. So let's go ahead and uh, click on this and okay there for a second there were no options there but it's like it was trying to sink and grab a wallpaper so now you can see exactly how this works the biggest problem is that it is showing the same wallpaper on both monitors which is a little bit of a bummer It'd be cool maybe you could do one for each monitor or something cool like that i can vote and say i like this picture but go ahead and switch to the next one and you'll see oh, there's a nice sloth we'll leave this sloth on there for now you should also have a couple new applications here like ClipChamp, which is a web app that is a video editor. It's okay. They've recently changed their tiers in terms of like how you're going to be paying for this thing and giving some better options in terms of the free tier up to 1080p free stock free filters. I mean, this is actually somewhat usable now and it's like i said it's a web app so it's all kind of done in the cloud to some degree and it's okay I mean, it's a free you know little video editor there's another one here called family safety i believe and i think it's something uh yeah there it is family and it is another web app and it's you know if you have a family account and people in your quote-unquote family you can sort of see what you can do here uh, watch for purchases on a child account screen time limits things like that, nothing too crazy. A really nice new, it's not a new application, but it's a new look is the task manager, which looks totally different now, totally, totally redesigned. It fits the new uh, styling of Windows 11. You've got several screens here that you can move between, uh, history, startup apps, different users, details, services, and then you can see for the settings what you're allowed to do there. Now, while the taskbar is still not like movable or anything cool like that, they have added the ability to drag things into it. I, I guess this wasn't a thing you could do before. From what I've read, you can grab that file and drag it into the taskbar and into an application. I, again, I'm not, I, I guess it's not something I ever really used. I didn't notice that it was missing, but apparently it was, and now it's here. And there's some cool stuff on the start menu too. So you can grab different applications here in your pinned apps. 
and you can actually throw them into a folder now. So I can drag those together and call that YouTube. I could grab Xbox and Steam and put all these together and call that gaming. And I can just sort of use this to organize things a little bit better than maybe I could before. That is very, very cool. If I right click and hit start settings, you can actually now change how many things you have pinned at the top and how many recommendations you have. I want to go with more pins and less things down here. I don't really, in fact, if I could get rid of this altogether, that would be really cool because I don't use it at all. But at any rate, you can kind of customize that a bit as well now. Should have mentioned this earlier, but in your notifications, you can actually turn off or on do not disturb right there from that rather than having to dig into your settings. Under accessibility, under accessibility and captions, we now apparently have the ability to do live captions, which you can just sort of put anywhere and it will listen to what you're watching or listening to and give you captions at any point. This is actually pretty cool. It seems to be doing a pretty good job of being accurate. We also have something under speech called voice access, which is pretty neat too for those of us that may be impaired in some way. What this is going to allow us to do is to use our microphone to control our computer. So let's go through this guide here real quick. It, it's asking me to say, voice access, wake up. Now, one problem that I'm already running into here is the fact that it doesn't seem to be working on my second monitor. So let me reorganize things a little bit and I'll bring you over to the other screen. Click animal friend. Click cat. Show numbers here. Click 11, and you can kind of see how this is working. You basically have the ability to just sort of dictate what is going to happen on the screen, move, you know, click on different things and do things by only using your voice. Pretty useful if, again, you are someone that might be impaired in some way. And I'm sure there are more things to cover than just those, but those are the biggest ones, the ones I thought stood out the most. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on your way. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.